So this is a grooming table I built to fit on top of our big dog crate. This replaces the table that sits right next to it right now in our living room. Just testing it out. I think someone likes it. This is a great table for a small dog. So if you got a little dog in a big crate, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. This is a shop dog's crate. He really enjoys staying in here and we train him to get in here whenever a company comes over. So it's real important that it stays in our living room. The problem is it takes up so much space. Our grooming table for our Havanese takes up a lot of space as well. So my wife had an idea of combining the two. Wanted me to build a grooming table she could put over the top of this crate. So I got to thinking about how I was gonna do that. I thought maybe I could build something that attaches to the top. Now the top is pretty flimsy. It's um, not too bad at the edges. So I think I've got an idea. Stick around and I'll show you what I came up with. So rough dimensions are 34 by 21. If we're going to have furring strips on each end, I'm going to need to make the table wide enough to have cleats on the end. So I need to make the table 36 inches long. And I guess the width can stay at 21. More than enough room for a little Havanese. I've got some MDF that I got for free, but it's taken up a lot of my panel storage, so I gotta get used. So I'm gonna use the track saw for the cross cut and then take it over to the table saw for the rip. A great tool for if you're ripping or even cross-cutting panels. Let's put this on top. Now I don't cut into my table. And the thing doesn't go crashing down to the garage floor. 36 inches down. Okay, let me go get my track and my track saw. And we'll get started on this. Put the edge right on this line. I'm not going to worry about clamping it down. This thing sticks pretty well with the weight of the track saw. I'll set this thing up for half inch depth. This is half inch MDF. Shot vac hooked up. With this MDF, I like to wear a particle mask. There we go. Would help if I turned on the shot vac. The more I think about it, the more I I think I should probably build a up high enough well and put a couple drawers underneath. That wouldn't take a whole lot. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut a second panel, put some sides on it, maybe just a couple inches deep, and then some, some simple drawers. I think I might even have some drawer slides left over, so change of plans. Hey Carson. So what I want to do is build kind of a just a box of two drawers and then a, the top will serve as the grooming table itself. One of the problems putting this together I want to use pocket holes which would work on the inside here but you don't really don't want the pocket holes to be going in that direction. It'll break through the MDF. So what I'm going to do is come behind it and that way I can get to all the screws. If you do it on the inside, you can get the bottom ones, but you won't be able to get the top ones. Not enough room. So I'll do it on the outside, and then I'll have to figure out how I want to cover that up. If I want to cover it up, we'll see how it looks. So in order to get that box, it's going to be three sides. I'll use these off cuts. These seem to be about the perfect depth that I need. So what I need to do is 
cut three of these at should be 20 and a half inches. One, two, three, over at the motor saw. So I'm gonna get busy on that. Set up my pocket hole jig. So I'm going all the way down to a half inch board thickness. That's how thick my MDF is. This is how you set your screw length. I'm gonna bring the bit down onto the three quarter inch. And now you just set the collar to be flush. So now it's set up, three quarter inch screw, half inch board. Okay, it's time for assembly. I'm going to put this back one on first. Put a couple in very lightly. Now I'll come in here with a brad nailer and get this corner. Middle one, I'm going to use a little help for getting it square. See the glue squishing out? That's good. Good sign. mark where this thing is. So to help me out, I use these, a center punch. It's called an automatic center punch. What this guy does Kind of handy. It grips your screw until you're done starting it. Now, once you get it started, you just pop the thing off. Oh, you're gonna get pinched. Okay, now to assemble the drawers. Well, I started to put this back piece in and I realized I made a huge mistake. If you caught that or not, but this board should be on the outside. So yeah, you get it off of there before the glue sets. I don't know. I put the brad nails in already. It's going to be a mess. I think what I'll do is get the glue off of here and get two more 19 and a half inch boards. Good thing I got lots of it. I'm glad I recognized it early. So instead of messing with the getting the brad nails out, I just went and ripped two more pieces. Now, the 16 
inch pieces go on the ends like that. Let's see if I can get this right. I love this glue dispenser. I don't know how I lived without one. Twenty-five and seven eighths. Twenty-five and seven eighths. Good. Nice and square like that. So it's the first week in August. Lumber prices are supposed to be coming down, but not here in Alaska. Uh, two by four is still nine dollars and eighty-eight cents at uh, Lowe's. Same thing with Home Depot. They're about ten bucks for an eight-footer. I checked on a quarter-inch plywood. I was going to buy a whole sheet and. They were sixty some dollars. So I found this sure ply quarter inch underlay. I'm going to use this for the bottom of the drawers. I've never used this product. Let's see how it goes. Three quarter inch birch plywood, hundred and four dollars at Lowe's, hundred and fourteen at Home Depot. So prices have definitely not come down. I need to build a bunch of cabinets in the shop, and uh, I refuse to do it at a hundred dollars a sheet of plywood. So. Hopefully those prices will come down soon. I know this is square. I've already measured diagonals. Use a round over bit on my little trim router here. Trim this bottom up a little. Drawers and I need it to be off the bottom so I have these spacers that I use are less than a quarter inch. So help me. Bring that out flush. I like to use the up and down slot. Okay, they're tight enough to where I can slide the whole thing out and get to the back ones. Need to put another screw in right there. Okay, it's good. Okay, time to put the top on. Just gonna go ahead and get that done. I need to glue it up and Brad nail it in. centerpiece goes. So next time I won't use the pocket holes. I don't know, with this particle board, the brad nails and glue are going to be strong enough for what I'm doing. I've got another piece of this quarter inch. I'll just glue it and tack it right there. Look a lot better. Swap my nails out again. Put my 5 eighths in here. Yeah, cut a couple drawer fronts. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work well. Now I'm going to take them over to the router table and shape them a little bit. 
Okay, I got a scrap piece and an edge forming bit in here. Let's see what kind of profile this puts on the MDF. Okay, I like it. I'm going to put that on my drawer front. Okay, that'll look good painted up. Time to paint it. Time to play. Okay, I got each of these flush. So I'll just make a measurement point to peak. 20 and 7 eighths. So I'll go cut 20 and 7 eighths on the stop block just like I did with these. And it should be a perfect miter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble it, paint it, and then tack it down to here. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and get this assembled on the table. Boy, this thing's heavy. It's come in handy. Two best places to mount them on the front and the back. I'm going to use inch and a quarter screws for this. Cut these off a little bit shorter. I need to go. I'm going to put a cleat in the back so when you pull the drawer, it doesn't slide. I think it's heavy enough, it's not going to go anywhere. But I'm going to put it on here and then mark for cleats. So I'm going to put an inside cleat. And then I'm going to put a cleat on the back. So let me mark for cleats on the inside here. So it's upside down now. This is the back. One there. One there. That's for side to side movement, so it doesn't have to be that strong. I'm not going to glue these just in case I need to move them. Well, I have to wrap up this project pretty quick. Cool Someone's very confused why this is out in the shop and not in the living room. Perfect. Bought some of this drawer liner from Lowe's. Put that on the top and then I'll put the frame over it. And then I'll screw it down on this. I'm going to glue the chain. So I'm not going to glue it down. Screw this down so in case I need to swap this. That's going to make a nice surface for Elsie. Yeah, once you get everything set up, uh, I like to clamp it down. Always be aware, don't, don't drill into your clamp. Now, more than likely, these are going to be too short. Yep, way short. They always are. So what I'll do is I'll countersink holes in here on the inside. So I would not recommend this for a big dog, but for our little 10 pound Havanese, this is perfect. I think this is going to work out great. Put all our grooming stuff in here. You like it up there? I like your treat. Yeah, this is going to be perfect. Good girl.